somebody else and tell them there is a word from the Lord. And I'm excited about the word. Come on, tell them like you really mean it. I'm excited about the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at that. Turn your Bibles to 2 Samuel. I want to read the, from the 6th chapter. And I want to read in your hearing verse 9 and 14. Again, that 2 Samuel. The sixth chapter, verse 9 and uh, through verse 15. Amen. We give honor to all that are in the house, those that are watching the YouTube live, and those that are here in person. We give God praise for you. Again, 2 Samuel 6, verse 9 through 15. And here at Divine House of Deliverance, we believe in standing out of reverence for the Word of God. So, all that can, if you don't mind indulging us and resting on your feet this morning. Again, 2 Samuel, the 6th chapter, verses 9 through 15. And the King James Version says, And David was afraid of the Lord that day, and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of one called Obed-Edom, the Gideite. Okay. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gideite, three months. Yeah. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his house. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertained unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and broke up the ark and of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness and it was so that when they had bared the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with the linen of ephod. Uh -huh. Last verse I'll read says, So David and all the house of Israel yeah. brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Yeah. And if you may take your seats, we thank God and we praise God for the reading of the word. Yeah. But on your way down, if you don't mind helping me announce my text, look at somebody and tell them, get up. Yeah. It's time to try it again. I'm going to look at one more person and tell them, get up. Yeah. It's time to try it again. We're praying. Father God, Lord, we thank you. We praise you today, God. 
God, we thank you for this time and this moment to be able to declare your word and receive your word. God, we pray that you bless every ear, open up every ear, God, open up every heart. Oh, God, prick hearts today, God, save, set free, encourage, deliver, God. God, we pray that you have your way in this place. Lord, we thank you even now. We praise you and we give you glory for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. Have your way in the name of Jesus. We do pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Come on, look at somebody and tell them again. Get up. It's time to try again. Hallelujah. Uh, listen, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful to God for God being the type of God he is to me. Listen, I don't have to look too far back to see the faithfulness of God. I don't have to look too far months and years back. I can look at this morning how he woke me up in my right mind. I can look back and I can see his hand in my life and of allowing certain things to happen, but also protecting me from things that should have happened. Can I get a t uh, an amen on today? I I'm so grateful to God, even in the place in my life that I'm in now. Listen, I'm in a place in my life now, uh, Sister Jones, that I'm learning how to balance. I'm learning how to balance now. I, I, I used to think I had it together, but now I'm learning in this busy portion of my life. I'm learning how to balance. I'm learning not only how to balance ministry, not only how to balance work, not only how to balance family, but watch this. I'm learning how to balance relaxation. I'm learning in this position in my life because yes, I can go, 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 but listen, if I do not take time to relax, I will burn myself out eventually. Can I get a an amen on today? Listen, and the one that I really struggle with is that relaxation. Do I have a witness on today? Yeah. And it seems like I get to a place where I just can't sit down. My hands are always finding something to do. But listen, when I do get some time, listen, I love, Sister Gray can attest to this, I love watching me a good show or a good movie. I love just sitting down and watching a television show or a movie because I just love a good story. I, I just love when a story comes together. I just love to learn the plots. And I don't just look at the characters. I don't just look at what the poster says. The movie is about. What I do is I listen to this ox of the story. I listen and try to figure out where the good news is going to come out of. And whether it's a book or a movie, I can watch comedies, I can watch a satires, I can watch action movies. But the ones that I love is when there is an overcomer. That's the ones that really encourage me when there's a, a, an underdog in the storyline and, and all of a sudden something happens or something does not happen and it causes that overcomer to overcome when it looked like in the midst of the story or the movie that the thing was about to destroy them when they got the bad news that cancer was in their body when they found out that they didn't have the money for the bills all of a sudden they get a phone call that somebody is going to do something all of a sudden the doctor says we missed a spot we need to retest. I, I love a good story when there is an overcomer and, and somebody may be just like me that, wonder, that wonders why do I love a story that is an overcomer because I am the overcomer. I, I'm the one that's in every storyline in my own story. I'm the one that has overcame trial after trial. I, I, come on, has anybody ever been through anything in this place? But it looked like your story should have been over. It looked like the story should have been stopped where there should have been a period. God said, I'm going to put a comma right there. And I'm going to allow the story to continue on. I, I love the story of an overcomer because I am the overcomer. Yes, I've been through some trials and some tribulations. Can, can I get a witness on today? I had some ups and some downs. I, I've been through trials. I've been through struggles. I, I had to struggle with my own self for a while. I, I've had enemies, and sometimes I was my own enemy. I, I've been through some struggles in my life, but I thank God there was an overcomer on the inside of me. I, I thank God that the Spirit of God was on the inside of me, telling me to push on, tell, telling me don't give up now, telling me I can't wave the right flag because there's greater on the inside of me. So I, I don't know about you, but I just come to encourage somebody and tell you there's greater after this. And, and I, I know the story looks like it's in its doom. I, I know that situation happening in your life, it seems as though nothing is going to take place. It seems like the story is about to be over, but I come to tell you to get up and try it again. I come to tell you that even though you may have tried before, I, I come to tell you even though you may have prayed about it before, I, I come to tell you even if you fasted and prayed about it before, I dare you to get up off of the floor and try it again. You know, the Bible tells 
tells us that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, I got some Bible readers in here, he's a, a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But we have to get to the place where we don't just get comfortable with one ass. I, I don't know about you, but when I was a little boy, and even though I asked one time for something from my parents, and they told me no, that wasn't the last time I asked. I, I had to wait a little while. I had to wait for the right moment. I had to wait to payday or something come up. And I waited for the right moment, and I tried it again. And eventually, sometimes it worked out. Because I did not give up. Because I got to the place where I was not satisfied with where I was. I wanted what I wanted. And, and does anybody have that testimony on today? That God has promised me some things. And the enemy is trying to play with my mind. He's trying to attack me in my dreams. To tell me that I'm not going to get what God told me that I could have. But you ought to tell the devil he's a liar. And the truth ain't in him. You ought to remind him that the Bible says that God is not like man. That he should lie. If he spoke it. He already got you. It's already approved. He's already got the check mark. You just gotta learn how to wait on Oh, we gotta learn how to wait. We gotta learn how to wait. We gotta learn how to wait. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that when I was ready to give up, that God didn't just close the curtain. I'm so I'm so glad that when I was ready to throw in the task, that God did not just push me to the side. I'm, I'm so ready when I had my mind made up that this was the end. I wasn't going to try or fight no more longer. I'm glad that there was something on the inside that was saying, that was something on the inside that was pushing me and driving me to the purpose that God had for me. So you listen, you ought to begin to tell the enemy. Uh, just like when de the enemy, the devil began to uh, try to tempt Jesus in different aspects of his life. Jesus had to begin to talk to the enemy. And listen, what he declared was the word of God. We got to get to the place now where we're not just sitting here and arguing with the devil. We, we're not just sitting here and going back and forth with the devil. But we're declaring the word of the Lord. Uh, listen, you got to make some declarations in your life. You ought to declare my story won't end in failure. Uh, this is not going to be the end of my story. You ought to tell the spectators, uh, don't change the channel yet. Keep watching. Keep, keep watching. Don't change the channel. Uh, this is just a confession. This is just a few moments. Uh, and if you keep watching, you're going to see how the story really ends. Uh, if you keep on, just wait a little while. Be patient. Be patient. Just because after a while, victory is on its way. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Victory. Is about to take place after this. And how do I know this? How do I know this? Because I understand that there is a blessing in not giving up. Yeah. There's a blessing in not giving up. I come to talk to the ones that seem like they've been defeated. I, I, I come to tell the ones that the enemy has played with you and, and gotten you to stop focusing on God. I, I, I want to tell you to focus, uh, to stop focusing on your lack of success, but it's time to turn your focus back to God. I, I know the enemy, what he does, he's a cunning devil. He, he's one that will get you to focus on the problem, get you to focus on the issue, get you to focus on the due date on the bill and, and not necessarily realize that God God has provided before. He, he wants you to focus on the bad news from the doctor and, and not focus that God has already healed before. He, he wants you to focus on the issue. I come to tell you that there is a blessing in not giving up. I, I come to tell you that I'm so glad that it's not about where you are now, but it's about how you finish. I, it, it's not about where you start. It's not about where you are. I, but the story continues as long as I got breath in my body, as long as I'm able to inhale and exhale, as long as blood is running warm in my veins, it's not over. It's not over. I don't care what the devil told you. It's not over. If it does not look like what God said it's supposed to be, it must mean it's not over is not over. And I come to tell you that it will not be easy. I come to tell you, just saying I got victory won't cut it. I, I come to tell you that there's going to be action behind your words. I, I come to tell you that it will not be easy. You're going to have to fight. I, I come to tell you that you're going to have to push aside your own agenda and your will. I, I come to tell you that you're going to have to push through the tiredness. I come to tell you you're going to have to push through the tiredness. Come on, do I have anybody that's ever been tired? I, I, I'm tired 
tired of the trials. I'm tired of the tribulation. I'm tired just in my body. I, I don't want to push no more. I don't want to fight no more. Especially when it seems like my fight ain't doing nothing. Has anybody ever been there where it seemed like you were swinging and swinging, but it was not doing nothing to the enemy? It seemed like all it was doing was tying you out. Every time you got up and prayed, it seemed like the situation got worse. Every time you said you were going to fast, all of a sudden when the fast is over, you get more bad news. But I come to tell you that there is a blessing in the faithfulness of God. There is a blessing when we remain faithful to God. Because the Bible says, in the midst of all that we go through, our trials and our tribulations, they come to help us. Uh, uh, the tribulation work in patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope make it not a shame. You, when you begin to go through trial after trial, you begin to get confidence, not in yourself, uh, but you begin to say, if God brought me through that situation, he's able, and he's got enough power to bring me over and through the next situation. And listen, he's not just going to barely walk me through it. The Bible says we are more than conquerors through him, Christ Jesus, that is in us. We are more than conquerors. Uh, we got to remember that even in the midst where we seem like we can't find strength, the Bible says, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall, but they that wait on the Lord, got some Bible readers in here, they shall renew their strength, they shall mount up weakly, wings as an eagle, they shall run and, and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint, not just tired. Tiredness may come. Yeah. Weariness may come. Yeah. But God is our strength. When we are weak, He is strong. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So we can't rely on our own power. That's when we got to realize that we've got to come up to the standard of God. I know you don't hear about it too much, but we got to come up to the standard of God. Listen, it amazes me how some people make it seem as though God's standard is ridiculous and, and unattainable. It, it amazes me, especially when we got standards of our own. We got standards of our own. Listen, we don't we don't tolerate dirty dirty things. You get to a restaurant and your fork and your spoon dirty, you gonna eat with it? Cause you got standards. You uh, excuse me, can I get another thing or or I'm gonna get up and leave and find some other clean place? I got standards. I I don't just eat off of anything. And can I tell you that God has standards as well? Can Can I tell you that the same way we have standards of what we use, God got the same standards. Can I tell you He got standards on what He and who He will use? The Bible says, "Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who Who, who shall stand in His holy place? Those that have clean hands." And a pure heart. God has standards just like we got standards. Can I tell you, we don't tolerate people that are inconsistent and uncommitted. Let people try to come in and out of life, in and out of life, in and out of life. No, 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 we got standards. At some point, we're going to shut that door and say, You ain't consistent enough. We got standards who we allow in our life. And can I tell you, God's got standards on what He allows? In order to be used by him, the Bible says we got to lay aside every word and every sin, the, the way and the sin, everything that, that, that pulls us away from God. We've got to lay it aside in order to be pleasing in his sight. We don't tolerate just anything. We don't tolerate fake people. No, don't, don't come with your nose in me. Don't come just trying to color up to me. We don't, we don't tolerate fake people because there's a standard that we have. And I come to tell you, God don't tolerate fake people like that either. Can I tell you, the Bible says that in the scripture, 2 Timothy 3 and 5, he said there were people that had a form of godliness. But they were denying the power thereof. You know you got some church people that know when to raise their hand. You know you got some people in the church that know when to cut their dance. They know when to spin around. They know when to get up and shout amen. They have the uh, form of godliness. But they're denying the power thereof. I come to tell you the same God that'll make me shout. He can tell me to hush my mouth. I come to tell you the same God that'll give me a quickening every once in a while. He's the one that'll correct me when I'm wrong. I come to tell you it's the same God. But some have a form of God, but denying the power thereof. But I come to tell you, God won't 
wants us to be real. He wants us to be sincere. He wants us to be consistent because he's consistent. He, he wants us to be resilient because he is resilient. But we must do it God's way. Not our way. Our way, our way will not get it done. We've got to do it. God's way. So we get to the scripture and the Bible tells us here David is newfound king. He, he notices that the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the presence of God in yeah. the people. And, and this time, what, what they did was they didn't just come and pray to feel the presence of God. They, what they would do is there was an ark, a, a small little wooden box uh, that would they would keep little uh, uh, increments, little things inside of the ark or the box that would remind them that God had been faithful. They had the tablets that Moses wrote the Ten Commandments on. Not only that, but they also had, uh, I believe they had Aaron's Staff, a portion of Aaron's staff in there. Not only that, but they even had a pot of manna from seeing God's faithfulness all throughout the years. Yeah. And what happened was David realized that the uh, Ark of the Covenant was not with them, so the presence of God was officially not with them. So he made up a plan. He gathered all 300 of the elders, the priests, and told them, we're going to get the presence. We're going to get the Ark of the Covenant. And watch this. They, out of all these 300 people plus him, you would think somebody would have said, let's find out how we're supposed to bring it to us. Uh -huh. well. <laughs> you would think somebody would have enough sense to say, hey, let's make sure we're doing this the right way because we don't want to just do God any kind of way. Uh -huh. But the Bible says what they do is they go to a man named Abinadab's house. And, and Abinadab was where the Ark of the Covenant was. And the scripture says Abinadab had two sons, Ohio and Uzzi. And, and the Bible says David, they brought a cart and an animal to drive the car to be able to just put the Ark of the Covenant on. And you would think just like we are moving, when we're moving out of our house, we get a dolly to just make it a little bit easier. We we travel for convenience. We don't want to just be left and stuff. But the bad issue about this was the scripture in Numbers had already told them they can't just carry the Ark any kind of way. Right, The Bible says that in Numbers it tells them that they must bear the ark, they, they had to carry it on their shoulder. It, it was a certain way. You know, nowadays in churches, you can do anything any kind of way. But especially in this time, there were standards that you had to uphold. There, there were things, there were certain ways you had to do things in order to be pleasing in God's sight. So the Bible says they were supposed to bear the ark, carry the ark. The Levites, the priests, were supposed to carry the ark, but they put it on the cart. As they're driving and carrying the cart, they, they're praising God because they got the presence now. They, they got the Ark of the Covenant with them. But the Bible says as they get a threshing floor, which is basically an uneven part of the road, the new cart begins to shake, and so does the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant tells us, uh, the Bible says the Ark of the Covenant begins to fall towards the ground, and one of the sons of Abinadab named Uzzah, what he did in just logical thinking, let me reach out and get it. I don't want the presence of God to hit the ground. Let me reach out and get it. The Bible says when he touched it, God smocked him there. He died there. Because he touched the ark of the covenant. And listen, that sounds harsh. God, why would you kill this man? Why would you allow death to come up on this man? Maybe he didn't know. I found out in many situations, intent doesn't matter. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I come to tell you, in many cases, intent doesn't matter. He was meaningful to do the right thing. But God punished him because it was not the right thing to do. The Bible in Numbers also told him, no man shouldn't touch it unless you're a Levite of a certain family. So he died doing what he thought was right. He was punished for what he thought was right. And I begin to think about the scripture where it says a man is right in his own eyes. You, you. We think we're doing the right thing. We think we, we, we're going through the right motions. We're, we're doing things that are pleasing unto God. But what does the word of God say? 
So the Bible says uh, David, he's distraught. He, he's distraught. He's upset that God would kill this man here. And they say, you know what? I'm not going to move the ark anymore. I'm going to leave it here and we'll come back and we'll try to figure out how to do it. Oh, my goodness. The Bible says three months pass by while the ark is in this man named Obed Edom's house. Yeah. Obed Edom is a Gideon, a man that, uh, just a normal man from what we read in the scripture. And the Bible says, as the ark was there for three months, Obed Edom's house was blessed for three months. For as long as the, listen, y'all gonna catch this in a minute. As long as the presence of God was in the house. As long as the representation of God was in the house. Blessings begin to come in the yeah. house. And the Bible didn't just say Obed Edom got blessed. The Bible says not only he, he got blessed, but his house got blessed. Yeah. Everything attaining to him, yeah. it got in my imagination, everybody walked, every neighbor that walked in the house got yeah. blessed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and every uh, spirit of depression that walked in got healed. Yeah. Now, uh, whatever it was, because when the spirit is in the place, uh -huh. where the spirit of the Lord is, there's yeah. liberty, there's yeah. freedom. Yeah. So the ark of the covenant was in this man's house yeah. for three months, and the blessings must have been so great word got back to David. David said, they said, David, Obed Edom's been having that ark, and he's been blessed beyond measures. Yes, In these three months, David must have took an opportunity to say, let's read this word. Let's, let's read these scribes. Let's try to figure out what we did wrong, because there's a blessing when we can correct, when we, when we can self-correct. Yes. They, 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 they say, listen, let's go back this time, and this time we're going to bear it. This time we're going to do it the right way. So they get to Obed Edom's house. The Bible says they bear the ark now. Yeah. Yes. And this is what blessed me, and I'm almost done. The Bible says that as they begin to go six paces, uh -huh. at every six steps they took one, Ooh, two, yeah, got two yeah. three, yeah, yeah. four, yeah. five, six. On that sixth step, what they did was they dropped the ark and they offered a sacrifice to yeah. God and they began to praise him. Yeah. Yeah. This was not a quick journey. This was not a quick place for them to get to. It wasn't just they only did this three times, four times. No, every six steps they took, they stopped and prayed. They worshiped God through their sacrifice and they praised him. The Bible said they got to the point where he praised God and danced with all of his might. And I don't know who I'm talking to on today, but don't you get too far before you stop and bless the name of the Lord. Don't you allow yourself to get too far off the before you just stop and say thank you. Before you just stop in your step and lift up your hands and tell God we appreciate you. Because what we don't fully understand is somebody died here. Somebody somebody didn't make it as far as we would have as we have made it. Somebody has died with the disease you got. Somebody has died with the situation. Somebody has lost their mind with the pressure that you got on you. Everybody has not made it as far as you have. So since I made it as far as I have, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna worship God. I'm gonna tell them I love them. I'm gonna tell them I bless them. I'm going to tell him how much I appreciate him and how much he is worthy of more praise. And it's not just going to be a thing that just starts and stops because I got six more steps to go. Because I got six more steps to go. So after these six steps, I'm going to bless you again because I could have died in that second step. I could have lost my mind when I was back there, but I got more steps to go. So if you get me an opportunity to make another six steps, for the steps that I made this far. I'm like, come on, do I have any grateful hearts in today? That I'm grateful whether that I am or where I am. I could have lost my mind where I was. I, I could have died in my sin. But I thank God for the last six steps that he let me have. I know we get to the place where we used to waking up every morning. I know we get to the place where we used to going on our job. We used to the bills getting paid. We got it on automatic pay. We don't even look at it no more. We got so comfortable with the blessings of God. But I come to tell you, don't go too far. You got to remember to bless God because even though you failed before, God is giving you another opportunity. How do I know you got another opportunity? Because you're still inhaling and exhaling. You're still breathing, so that must mean you got another chance to get this thing right. Yeah. Yes, I failed before. Yes, I made 
the wrong decision. But if God gives me an opportunity to correct this thing, it could have took me when I made the mistake. I should have died in that car wreck. I should be behind those prison walls. I should be laid up in the hospital. Y'all should have already been to my memorial service. But God in his faithfulness, in his faithfulness and in his grace and his mercy, he gave us another chance. So I come to tell somebody, get up, get up again. Get up, get up, get up, get up. I know you failed before, but get up again. I know that you struggled before, but get up, get up, get up again. Dust yourself off and try it again. Try it again. Get up. It's time for you to try it Again, uh -huh. because the issue comes, the question comes, what happens? How do you handle failure? Uh -huh. What happens? What happens when failure comes? How do you handle it? Yeah. And David could have easily said, listen, that ark just ain't going to be ours. Uh -huh. He could have he could have been satisfied. Listen, we've done without it so far. We don't need to go back. And how many times have we got satisfied without the things that God said we can have? How many times have we been satisfied without the things that God said that were out, we just got comfortable with? Maybe God won't do it. Kind of just like Abraham when he got promised to set you. Sarah, listen, maybe, maybe he didn't mean it was going to be me. Maybe it was going to be somebody else that's blessed. Maybe we need to figure out why he's taking so long. I come to tell you to wait on God. Wait on God. God and learn to be resilient. Get up again. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. The issue is not being knocked down. Listen, how many times you gonna get up? Get up again. Get up again. I don't care what you failed at before. Get up again. Now watch this in my closing. Bible says he didn't come back the same way. Well. He didn't come back saying, all 300 of y'all, come on. Uh -huh. Let's bring a new card and try this thing again. Uh -huh. But everything has to be done in the right timing yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right. and the right way. That's right. I'm not much of a baker, Sister Bray will tell you that. <laughs> but if you bake a cake and you take it out too soon or too early, uh -huh. that's not going to be a delicious cake. Uh -huh. <laughs> because everything yeah. has to be done in the right timing. Right. And the right way. If you right. listen, you leave the eggs out or you leave the flour. Listen, you're gonna be in a bad situation because everything has to be done at the right time and in the right way. They came back based on the word of God. They buried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they stopped to give God praise. David could have wallowed in his misery. He could have said, "This must be God's will." You know how we get to the place where maybe it's not in God's will. Yeah. We prayed for healing, prayed for deliverance. Yeah, yeah. And it hasn't come when we thought it should come. Yeah, right. And we begin to get content and say, maybe it's just not in God's will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, we're, what you're facing on today. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're going through or experiencing. Yeah. I don't know what you failed at in the past. Yeah. But I come to tell somebody, yeah. get up. Yeah. It's time to try it again. Yeah. Get up. Get up. The enemy wants you to stay down. Uh -huh. yeah. The enemy wants you to waddle in your mess. The enemy wants you to waddle as though you are defeated. But I come to tell everybody listening under the sound of my voice, get up, get up, get up. It's time to try it. You've been sitting for too long. You've been sitting there for too long. You don't have enough time to waddle there. I've given you time to cry your last tear. It's time to get up there. It's time to dry your face. It's time to put your shoes back on this time for you to get ready again and do what God has told you. He is a rewarder. He is a rewarder of the young and diligently seeking. So we're standing all over the field. My mission today is to encourage you to get back up. I don't know where you fall down to. I don't know how many times you have fallen. I don't know what your record is. But I found out that in any battle, generally in any fight, especially in boxing, there's more than one round. So listen, I, I, 
I know Brown wasn't what he looking good for me. I know I should have bobbed when I when I when I was swinging. I I, I know I should have weaved that, but it caught me by surprise. But the next round, I get it. The next chance, I get the next opportunity, I get it. I'm gonna do what I was supposed to do. I'm gonna do what the word of God. someone that's saying, I'm tired of living the way that I've been living. And because someone saying, I'm, I'm tired of this feeling that I've been feeling, the, the feeling of discomfort, the feeling of problematic issues, issues uh, the feeling of not being able to sleep at night. I don't got no joy. I don't got no peace. I come to tell you that all of that is found in Jesus. Come to tell you, somebody may say, I just want to receive salvation. If that's you, I want y'all to meet me here. Because the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And what am I being saved from? I'm being saved from sin and the burden of sin. The consequences of sin. And maybe someone's saying, I just need. Because I know the Bible 